Hello fellow introverts and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to ask you probably the most important question you'll ever have to answer. Do you possess the psychological profile of a serial killer? The Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, defines a serial killer as a person who murders three or more people, usually in service of abnormal psychological gratification, with the murders taking place over more than a month and including a significant period of time between them. Multiple victims, a serial killer has murdered multiple individuals, generally with a minimum of three victims. Cooling off period, unlike spree killers or mass murderers, serial killers have a distinct cooling off period between their murders. This period can last days, weeks, months, or even years. Psychological gratification, the murders are usually committed as part of a psychological compulsion, often with elements of power, control, or sexual gratification. The killings are rarely for financial gain or other practical motives. Methodical approach, serial killers often follow a particular modus operandi, mo, or pattern of behavior, when committing their crimes. This can include specific methods of killing, victim selection, and rituals. This definition helps differentiate serial killers from other types of multiple murderers, such as spree killers, who kill multiple victims in a short time frame in multiple locations, and mass murderers, who kill multiple victims in a single event. Serial killers often exhibit a range of psychological characteristics and behaviors, though each individual's profile can vary. Common traits and factors observed in many serial killers include Childhood trauma Many serial killers experience significant trauma, abuse, or neglect during their childhood, which can contribute to their later violent behavior. Lack of empathy They typically show a profound lack of empathy and an inability to form genuine emotional connections with others. Antisocial behavior From a young age, they may display antisocial behavior such as lying, stealing, or harming animals. These behaviors can escalate over time. Manipulative and charming. Some serial killers can be highly manipulative and charming, using these traits to gain the trust of their victims and others around them. Fantasy life. They often have a rich fantasy life involving power, control, and violence. These fantasies can be a precursor to their real-life crimes. Paraphilias. Many have abnormal sexual desires or practices, which can be a significant motivating factor in their crimes. Sensation-seeking. They may engage in risky or thrill-seeking behavior, finding excitement in their criminal activities. Intelligence. Some serial killers possess above-average intelligence, which they may use to plan and execute their crimes meticulously. Control and power. A desire for control and power over their victims is a common driving force behind their actions. Mental disorders. Certain mental disorders, such as psychopathy or sociopathy, are often present. These disorders are characterized by a lack of remorse, shallow emotions, and impulsivity. Isolation. Many serial killers lead isolated lives, with few genuine social connections or relationships. Early warning signs, behaviors such as bedwetting, fire setting, and cruelty to animals, often referred to as the McDonald Triad, are sometimes observed in the childhoods of serial killers, although this theory is debated. While these traits are common, not all serial killers will exhibit all of them, and some individuals with similar characteristics do not become violent criminals. The combination of genetic, psychological, and environmental factors contributes to the development of a serial killer. Several infamous serial killers exhibit many of the traits described. Here are a few examples. Ted Bundy 1. Ted Bundy was an American serial killer who confessed to murdering 30 women across several states in the 1970s. 1. He often approached his victims in public places, feigning injury or impersonating an authority figure to gain their trust. 2. Habits. Bundy was known for his meticulous planning and ability to blend into society. 2. He often revisited crime scenes and engaged in necrophilia. 3. Capture. Bundy was initially arrested in 1975 on suspicion of burglary, but further investigation linked him to the disappearances of several women. 3. 
He escaped from custody twice but was recaptured both times. 3. His final capture in 1978 came after he was pulled over for driving a stolen car and police linked him to the Florida murders through physical evidence. 4. Charming and manipulative, Bundy was known for his charisma and good looks, which he used to lure his victims. 5. Intelligent, he was intelligent and articulate, often representing himself in court. 6. Lack of empathy, Bundy displayed a complete lack of remorse for his actions. 7. Control and power, his crimes were driven by a need to dominate and control his victims. Jeffrey Dahmer. 1. Jeffrey Dahmer, also known as the Milwaukee Cannibal, was an American serial killer who murdered 17 young men and boys from 1978 to 1991. 1. He lured his victims to his apartment, where he drugged, strangled, and dismembered them. 1. He also engaged in necrophilia and cannibalism. 2. Habits. Dharma kept parts of his victims' bodies as trophies and experimented with their corpses. 2. He had a fascination with zombies and attempted to create living zombies by drilling holes into his victims' skulls and injecting acid. 3. Capture. Dharma was captured in 1991 when one of his intended victims, Tracy Edwards, managed to escape and flagged down police. 3. Upon entering Dharma's apartment, police found photographs of dismembered bodies and human remains, leading to his arrest. 4. Childhood trauma. Dharma had a troubled childhood with a history of neglect. 5. Paraphilias. He had abnormal sexual desires, including necrophilia and cannibalism. 6. Isolation. Dharma was a loner with few social connections. 7. Fantasy life. His crimes were an extension of his violent and controlling fantasies. John Wayne Gacy 1. John Wayne Gacy, known as the Killer Clown, murdered at least 33 teenage boys and young men between 1972 and 1978 in Illinois. 1. He lured his victims to his home by offering them work or pretending to be a police officer. 2. Habits, Gacy performed as Pogo the Clown at children's parties and community events. 2. He buried most of his victims in the cruel space of his house. 3. Capture, Gacy was arrested in 1978 after a 15-year-old boy, Robert Pierce, went missing and was last seen with him. 3. A subsequent search of Gacy's house revealed evidence of the murders, including the discovery of bodies in the cruel space. Charming and manipulative, Gacy was well liked in his community and often dressed as a clown for children's parties. 4. Lack of empathy, he showed no remorse for his crimes. 5. Control and power, Gacy's crimes involved a significant degree of control and torture over his victims. Alien Warnos. 1. Alien Warnos was an American serial killer who murdered seven men in Florida between 1989 and 1990. 1. She claimed that the killings were in self-defense against men who tried to rape her while she was working as a prostitute. 2. Habits. Warnos used a gun to shoot her victims at point-blank range and then robbed them. 3. Capture. Warnos was arrested in 1991 after being identified through fingerprints left on one of the victim's vehicles and personal items pawned in her name. 3. Her friend, Tyria Moore, cooperated with the police and helped to extract a confession from Warnos during a recorded phone call. 4. Childhood trauma, Warnos had a highly abusive and traumatic childhood. 5. Antisocial behavior, she engaged in criminal activities from a young age. 6. Lack of empathy. Warnos displayed a lack of empathy and remorse for her actions. 7. Isolation. She lived a transient lifestyle with little social support. Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer. 1. Gary Ridgway, known as the Green River Killer, murdered at least 49 women in Washington state during the 1980s and 1990s. 1. Most of his victims were sex workers or runaways whom he strangled and dumped in remote areas. 2. Habits. 
Ridgeway often returned to the dump sites to engage in necrophilia with the decomposing bodies. 3. Capture. Ridgeway was arrested in 2001 after a DNA sample taken in 1987 was retested with new technology and matched DNA found on several victims. 3. He eventually confessed to 71 murders as part of a plea deal to avoid the death penalty. 4. Paraphilias. Ridgeway had abnormal sexual desires and often targeted sex workers. 5. Lack of empathy. He showed no remorse for his extensive list of victims. 6. Control and power. Ridgeway's crimes involved controlling and overpowering his victims. 7. Childhood trauma. He experienced a troubled upbringing with a domineering mother. These individuals exemplify how the combination of childhood trauma, psychological disorders, and certain behavioral traits can culminate in violent and deadly actions. Each case also highlights the diversity among serial killers, with different motivations, methods, and profiles. Are these individuals capable of rehabilitation, according to psychologists? The question of whether serial killers are capable of rehabilitation is a complex and contentious issue within the field of psychology. Generally, the consensus among psychologists and criminologists is that the likelihood of successfully rehabilitating a serial killer is extremely low. Here are some key points to consider. Psychological traits. Personality disorders. Many serial killers exhibit severe personality disorders, such as psychopathy or antisocial personality disorder. These conditions are characterized by a lack of empathy, remorse, and a pervasive pattern of manipulating and violating the rights of others. These traits are deeply ingrained and resistant to treatment. Deep-rooted issues, the behaviors and motivations of serial killers often stem from complex and deeply rooted psychological issues, including childhood trauma, sexual fantasies, and a need for power and control. These issues are difficult to address and modify through conventional therapeutic methods. Treatment challenges. Lack of motivation. Serial killers often lack the motivation or willingness to change. Their crimes provide them with psychological gratification, making them less likely to engage genuinely in rehabilitative efforts. Risk to society. Given their violent histories, serial killers pose a significant risk to society. Releasing them, even after extensive treatment, carries a high risk of recidivism. This risk makes it difficult to justify their rehabilitation and reintegration into society. Case studies and evidence. Limited success, there are few documented cases of successfully rehabilitated serial killers. Most known serial killers have either been executed, died in prison, or remain incarcerated. Ongoing management, those who have shown some improvement through treatment typically require constant monitoring and ongoing management, which is not practical or feasible on a large scale. Expert opinions. Pessimistic view. Many experts in forensic psychology and criminology hold a pessimistic view regarding the rehabilitation of serial killers. They argue that the characteristics and behaviors of serial killers are too entrenched and pathological to be effectively treated. Ethical considerations. There are also ethical considerations regarding the allocation of resources for the rehabilitation of serial killers versus their containment to protect public safety. While theoretical possibilities for rehabilitation exist, in practice, the rehabilitation of serial killers is generally deemed improbable. The combination of severe personality disorders, deep-rooted psychological issues, and the high risk of recidivism contributes to the prevailing view that these individuals are unlikely to be rehabilitated successfully. And with that I will encourage all of you to make wise choices, and I'll talk to you nerds later.